before we begin formalities, I actually just wanted to have a um, really quick chat about culture. And um, what I've discovered as a council, new councillor is that we sometimes spend up to nine hours in this room sitting at these desks. Obviously, um, investing in standing desks is not appropriate. So um, I just want to encourage everybody, when you're in the Governance and Finance Committee meeting, that you can stand up and move and walk around as you like. You don't need to wait for breaks. Um, I, will, it's complete, I feel completely comfortable with you all doing it. And um, yeah, don't feel like you're being rude or disrespectful or disengaging. I'll just completely take it as um, you needing to move. So thanks very much. Um, I'd like to get underway with um, an opening karakia. Um, so I'd like everybody etu for karakia. And I know that doing a karakia is um, new for some people, and so I just want to encourage you to give it a go. I've got the English translation there. Um, you're welcome to say that as well. So um, if you'd like to follow along. Etu hui, whaia, te matarangi, kia marama, kia whaia, take ngā mahi katoa, tu maia, tu kaha, aroha atu, aroha mai, tato e tato katoa. Kia ora, everybody. So, um, apologies today. We have um, apologies from Her Worship the Mayor and Councillor Noonan, who will be a little late due to council business. Um, we also have um, Nikki McDonald, who will be joining the meeting late, and we've got Nikki Harrison in her place for now. And then later on, when we have a workshop, um, Roger Ball is going to be joining us by phone. Um, he's out of the office today. I don't think we've got any other apologies. No. Um, confirmation of order of business. Um, order of business is as um, outlined in the agenda. Um, just a reminder that we are being live streamed and um, to please use your microphone on and then off when you're speaking and finish speaking. Um, any recommendations we displayed on both screens and if, there's, if anyone's proposing a amendment to a recommendation, hopefully you'll have sent that through in advance, but otherwise um, just make a, it's, it's good to draft up words um, rather than just kind of doing it on the fly. Do we have any updates to the interests register? I have resigned from the Light Nelson Trust as of yesterday. Light Nelson. Yeah, I'm no longer trustee of the Light Nelson Trust. Okay, thanks very much, Councillor Aini. That's noted. Um, we've got no public forum today, um, but I'd like to welcome those members of the public in the gallery. Really nice to have you along. Um, so moving on to um, item number five, confirmation of minutes. It's pages six to 14 in the agenda. Um, we have a recommendation that the Governance and Finance Committee confirms the minutes of the meeting um, of, the, of the Governance and Finance Committee held on the 5th of December 2019 as a true and correct record. Do we have anybody that would like to have to move that? Happy yeah, to second. Eka, thanks. Um, any other comments? <coughs> questions? No? Okay, all in favour? Aye. Those against? Carried. Okay, moving on to item number six, Chairperson's Report. I'm sorry, it's it's on your desk. Um, I had a few last minute um, adjustments <laughs> to my Chairperson's Report and a few things to work through. So um, I guess first up, uh, it's a recommendation to receive the Chairperson's Report. Would anybody like to um, move that? Thanks, Councillor Fulton, thanks. Seconded by Councillor Courtney. All those in favour? Aye. Against? Drink. Carried. We've got some questions. Okay, great. Yeah, just with, um, just uh, I, I would just like you to expand a little bit on the emissions trading scheme, and it sounds like a really interesting.
opportunity and uh, how are you managing to progress this initiative? Um, well, I guess at this stage we're just in very, very early stage of um, exploring what the opportunities may be for the council. So um, I don't really probably have anything more to add um, other than that, but I'm, I'm, I am going to actually talk through my s this. If I'm going to read that out if it's okay. Yeah, if you want to talk through it, that would yeah. be great. Okay. Um, any, anything else? No? Okay, so um, I just, I'm just going to pause for a moment. Okay, so I'm just going to talk through my um, Chair's report. As many of you um, know, because you were there, last week was the unveiling of the new sculpture family tree by inter internationally renowned kinetic artist Phil Price. It was a really great unveiling and really moving to hear him talk about growing up in Nelson and his deep connection and the affection he holds for our community his acknowledgement of his parents and his acknowledgement of his parents who still live here. And in his own words, he described this, the sculpture. In a world of di division, this represents a celebration of place, of life and of family. All people we are connected with. This is family tree. I thought it was just really beautiful words from him. And um, I think that the sculpture is just incredibly appropriate for our city and for... Um, you know, the location along the riverside. And I also love the kind of egalitarian nature of um, community artworks. So um, I would like to take this opportunity to acknowledge the City of Nelson Civic Trust, um, an organisation that I'd not even heard of actually until I started attending council meetings in preparation for the election. Um, I feel that the trustees and the benefactors deserve acknowledgement for their vision, hard work and generosity in gifting this incredible sculpture to the city. Um, and I'd also like to acknowledge the council staff who've supported the Civic Trust with its fantastic Riverside location. Okay, moving on. So because we've got a really short meeting today, I thought I'd tell you a very short story. And it is relevant to this meeting. <laughs> in 2001, I co-founded an experiential education organisation working internationally with youth. A key focus of our programming was sustainability education. But the irony of having young people flying around the world to learn about sustainability was not lost on us. We felt uncomfortable about it. So in 2005, with a growing awareness of the significant impact that flying was contributing to carbon emissions, we began measuring and offsetting our organisation's carbon emissions through a US-based organisation, Sustainable Travel International. However, it was not a particularly transparent scheme, and not knowing where the money was going, we decided to see if we could do something in New Zealand to offset our emissions and have a positive impact. Not finding any local schemes, we contacted the Department of Conservation, and over a few years, negotiated a memorandum of understanding, becoming the first organisation in the country to do so, covering this kind of initiative. And in the ensuing years, we physically ourselves, our students, our staff, ourselves, planted over 20,000 trees in eight sites around the country, five of which are in Nelson, Tasman. Fast forward to 2020, and we're in a very different climate. We have zero carbon legislation, a robust emissions trading scheme, a carbon farming industry worth over a billion dollars per annum. It's coming very close to um, passing the wine industry, and, a regulated, and regulated guidelines around the value of the NZU, the carbon credit unit. This presents opportunities for landowners, and I suspect that Nelson City Council as a landowner with commercial forestry and regenerating an indigenous forest reserves may be in a position to benefit from this to effectively obtain a yield whilst protecting our forests. So with the support of John Murray as Chair of the Forestry Advisory Group and Councillor Tim Skinner as Chair of the Sports and Recreation Committee, we will be exploring what opportunities there may be for Nelson City Council and I will be reporting back to this committee in due course. So I'd just like to acknowledge John Mary and Tim Spinner, thank you for your support in this and yeah, happy to take questions.
Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I think this sounds really good. Um, uh, congratulations to you for pushing it and, and getting it to the stage. And um, um, thank you to the other members for supporting your endeavours. I just wonder if you could expand a bit on what exploring might mean when we say we're exploring this, uh, this opportunity. So at this stage we have a meeting scheduled with... Um, Forestry Advisory Group um, and um, the Parks and Sports and Recreation, um, where there will be, um, I guess, specialists who can talk to us about um, what the opportunities might be for Nelson City Council. So, really looking at our current, yep, yeah, our current, um, the land we have. Um, what, what might be eligible for inclusion in the admissions trading scheme, what the costs and benefits might be. Through chair, to the Chair, I should say. So that's because the, that land isn't currently part of the scheme. It's not registered for carbon credits. That is correct. None of Nelson City Council's land or forests are registered in the admissions trading scheme. Right, so potentially there's an opportunity for us to make money We'll make get carbon credits from our forests. Yes, thanks for um, spelling that out. That's that's exactly why I'm pursuing it. Yeah. Um, I see that there's potentially economic benefit for our community, our ratepayers, through pursuing this. Additionally, there is potentially the opportunity that we could be offsetting our own emissions as an organisation. Um, and yeah, so th there's. Lots of potential opportunities, but we just don't know unless we explore it. So yeah. it's we, you know, it might come to nothing, but it's at least I felt that due diligence was needed in exploring mm. the opportunities for all of our land holdings. Great stuff. Good work. Thank you, Councillor Fulton. Um, thank you. Yeah, this is an amazing piece of work you've been doing, Rachel, in the background, and well done for getting it to this stage. So my question is around: if our land is not part of this scheme, how do we measure? and we're doing quite a lot of re regeneration of plants and trying to plant more trees to offset our carbon emissions, how would we measure it otherwise? Is it, or is it not currently being measured? So I guess it depends on what kind of measurement you're talking about. So if you're talking about carbon, we're not currently measuring it for carbon, but I guess if you're talking about recreational use or biodiversity value, there will be measurements around those that staff are currently undertaking. Mm -hmm. So it just depends what we're kind of looking at. I guess at. I'm thinking in terms of um, reaching a goal of, of AOT or Roll being carbon zero, unless we measure the, carb the potential of our forests, then they are not, this is the only way of measuring that potential, I'm presuming, so they don't, Sit in terms of that, um, <coughs> in terms of that, in terms of. Yeah, so I think the key thing to be aware of here is that there is a cost benefit. You know, that we have we have to look at the cost benefit. <coughs> Basically, if it costs more to measure the carbon than we would earn from measuring the carbon, it's just not worth doing, and we just go. Um, we've yeah. got. Yeah, you know, I, I, I think like an individual in their gardens, yeah. that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. That our forest is, um, you know, that we protect it for the values that it um, holds for the community for recreation and biodiversity. But um, yeah, we don't know until we get some expert advice. And, okay. Yeah. Thanks very much. Um, cool. No, cheers to that. I'll probably, we probably don't need to go into much detail on this. This is another another day, but it's 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 obviously wise to have a relook at those. But I just remind council and yourself, we've uh, we had um, Dr. Sean Weaver, um, who runs Ecos, which is a, a market carbon market. He's been was doing overseas, but also in Southland. But he gave some good input. Um, things may have changed since then, but it'd be worth also us relooking re re at. But the council, current councillors and past councillors, it's probably worth a look back in 2017. He submitted to us and it was a bit of work and he he's been um calls himself a, a rainforest saving junkie in his own words but he was a, a wealth of wisdom on that yeah, thank thanks councillor Skinner. appreciate it <laughs> councillor edgar uh thank you um yes so uh two things firstly um it was great having the acknowledgement of the City of Nelson Civic Trust. The statue is absolutely stunning. It is just so beautiful. Um, 
I think you know young and old would really appreciate it. Its location is is fantastic, um, and you know as as they said at the unveiling, you know they've gifted nearly a million dollars since they started um, to the people of Nelson. You know this is something that everyone gets to benefit from, and you know they have contributed nearly a million dollars, um, you know, to our city and our residents. And yeah, I just think. You know, it was great having this acknowledgement and, um, yeah, we really do value the partnership we have with them. Uh, and then just uh, finally, yeah, I just wanted to also commend the Chair on um, uh, bringing the Emissions Trading Scheme forward and I look forward to, you know, seeing what we can come up with because it's absolutely, you know, we know our ratepayers want to look at things that... Um, support the environment. We also know they want to look at things that uh, support our financial position. So um, if we can get win-wins, that's fantastic and we do need to be looking at those opportunities. So thank you. Okay, I think I'm um, back to moving the Chair's report. Um, I think I had Councillor Fulton. Yeah, yep. so um, all, those in, all those in favour? Oh, Against? Carrie, thanks very much. Okay, moving on to item number seven, Nelson Centre of Musical Arts, Letter of Expectation 2021. Absolutely. Yep, so uh, that's page 15 of your agenda, um, and we're just calling in um, Roger Ball for this meeting. Oh, and we've got Mike Trugertha. Welcome, Mike. So, Preston, sorry. <laughs> yeah, Preston Thomas. Sorry, Mike. Roger. Roger, do we have you? Uh, yes, turned in. Thank you very much. Okay, thanks very much. Um, kia ora, Mike. Kia ora. Sorry for getting your surname mixed up. Yeah. Um, is there anything, we'll take the report as read, is there anything that you'd like to add? or uh, highlight? Um, no, no, nothing to add to the report um, and just um, confirming that this is um, an organisation where we're aiming to mirror the processes of letter of expectation statement of intent that is used by um, CCOs, but NCMA is not a CCO. We've got any questions from the committee? Is quiet, um, I'll ask. Oh, um, sorry, actually, sorry, um, Councillor Courtney. We're going to start with um, Councillor um, John Murray, and then Councillor Edgar, and then Councillor Courtney. Um, thank you, uh, thank you for the report. Uh, look, I just wondered um, if it'd be appropriate, uh, given this was drafted um, some time ago, and you've been working on the appointment of a business advisor as to whether that's um, happened or where that's currently at. So that would be question one, and question two. Um, is around, um, I appreciate that we're mirroring um, a, a statement of um, expectation type process, but it isn't actually one that's enshrined by all of those regulations that go with that. So I just wondered if we shouldn't be including in here um, their requirement um, to report against this at the end of the year and their KPIs and how they've gone at the end of the year, okay. because that's not actually, that comes in a different part of the regulation. So we should perhaps put that in here if we're just mirroring it. Okay. So that's the last two questions, thanks. Okay. So through the Chair, thanks for that. Um, in terms of the recruitment of a business advisor, we're currently in a procurement process um, for that. Um, so that's well underway. Hopefully we'll have someone on board by the end of the month. Um, in terms of the adding the reporting um, requirement, I'm not aware of any reason that couldn't be added. Thanks very much. Um, Councillor Edgar. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, so I noted you have met with um, the NCMA Board Chair and um, CEO, just making sure they have seen the latest version of what is proposed around all the reporting. Um, you know, one of the keys is about the relationship. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I think it is always handy to set things out quite clearly, so people know where they stand um, but I just wanted to make sure it's a two-way that we're working on not a one-way. 
Yes, thank you um, for that. Um, there have been many discussions um, as we've rolled along um, with the NCMA. Um, they are, have indicated they're very keen to work with us, particularly on the development of the smart de um, performance measures and, um, and the measurables that sit in behind that. Um, and that will be the topic of further discussions as they develop their statement of intent. Thank you. I think it does provide a really good opportunity for them to be able to actually showcase uh, some of what they do do um, as it aligns with Council's uh, community outcomes. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, Councillor Courtney. Thank you, Madam Chair. Through to um, Officer Preston Thomas. Mark, um, is this the only letter of expectation that we have with an organisation that isn't a CCO or a CCTO? I believe so, yes. Yeah. So it was yes, was it? I believe so. Mm. Following on from that then, do you think that this council should possibly exercise its mind on on looking at um, perhaps getting into a CCO or a CCTO with the Nelson Centre for Musical Arts? Is this a, an area that we should be exploring in your judgement? Through the chair, that's not an area that um, we've actively considered in putting together this report. Didn't answer, excuse me, you didn't answer my question. I just said, as an officer, do you think that, um, in your judgment, this is something we should exercise our minds on, seeing as we're so close to? C Councillor Courtney, sorry. Um, I think that um, Mark, Mark Preston Thomas is not able to give a personal um, opinion on that. Um, so I think he can um, speak to the report, but um, maybe, um, yeah. No, I'm not seeking a personal opinion. I'm, expe I'm ex expect expecting a, or requesting a, a judgment as far as his position is concerned, his knowledge on this matter of the Nelson Centre Madam, Madam Chair, I could perhaps assist. Thanks, uh, Roger. Go for it. Oh, look, it's through the chair, and, and, and thank you for your uh, tolerance of me phoning in. Um, I'm just exercising some of the measures here in light of the uh, upcoming uh, plague with my flu, just to keep some distance from you at the moment. Um, so in response to Councillor Courtney's um, comment, I, I just go back to the review that we did last year, uh, which was an independent review by Bruce Robertson, and... Um, he, he did, he did uh, briefly look at that issue, but did not feel that there were sufficient reasons to um, t take the council down that line. Um, his, the burden of, of, of what he suggested was that we should mimic um, the CCO arrangement so far as a statement of intent and expectation is concerned, and that's, that's what we've, that's what we've um, um, gone down the line of. Um, if there is a larger question there, um, look, it could be something that the council could look at. But um, we, we, it, it's it's not a straightforward thing. Um, we have looked at it in recent times in regards to campgrounds. Um, it does come up in, in some other areas. Um, there are costs. There are financial implications. There are consultation obligations to go down that road. Um, it is. It would be um, a serious question and a large piece of work, and it's not one that was contemplated in the. Um, in the review that was just done. Thank you. Thanks, thanks Roger. You com comfortable? Yeah. Um, any other questions from the committee? I, I guess I just have one, Mark. Given the feedback or the comments and questions, um, suggestions for um, content to be included into the letter, um, do you now take those away and then um, proceed? So um, are you comfortable that we... Um, move forward with the uh, recommendations as such? Um, the, in certainly in terms of the feedback and the importance of the relationship um, with the NCMA and the desire by committee to continue to work with them, we're very aware of that and very actively pursuing that. Um, I guess if you are wanting something in addition to what's um, to the resolutions, then we probably should add it because that'd be reflected in the formal um, letter of expectation that goes out. Got a question from Councillor Skinner. Yeah, thank you. Sorry, I didn't raise my hand earlier. I just trying to work out the best way to word it. Um, 
some good paragraphs in there. Do you think this is this is what we what we're going to get out the other end of this with the letter of intent, not intent, but letter of understanding and, and statement of intent? Are we in effect sort of mentoring this independent organisation, or are we sort of then getting feedback and taking a bit of onus on how to go forward, both financially or resource-wise? So again, reflecting on the Roberts and review, there was um, several recommendations in there, one of which was to change the way that um, the governance relationship works. So this is addressing that, and I think it will be incredibly positive. Um, they are really excited about the opportunity to engage directly with you um, in a meaningful way, so that is fantastic. There are other recommendations in that report, such as the um, recruitment of the business advisor, which are also going forward, which will, we're really confident, strengthen both NCMA and the relationship that it has with Council. Uh, thank you. Sure. Um, th thanks for that. Um, I see the positives in there. Do you think there's any danger of it sort of falling on us if things aren't going as well as we would like or they would like as in any organisation resource wise or others that then there'll be an onus back on us that we've sort of taken a bit of ownership in that sense rather than being a partner as in support so through the chair again that's part of the purpose of having the business advisor in so that there is um, I guess that closer working relationship and a mechanism to understand early if there are any risks um, or issues for NCMA or Council. So that's very much part of the purpose of the of this approach and the um, and the way we're moving going forward. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Councillor McGurk. Just a quick question into you, uh, Madam Chair. I was just picking up something Mr. Murray mentioned a moment ago about reporting against the recommendations and I'm just wondering if it's actually a specific recommendation a specific thing we want to include in the uh, in the letter um, let, the letter is that reporting on some specific recommendations out of the uh, out of the Robinson report I know we're dealing with it but a, a specific commentary on on each of those or the main ones is that Right, we've got the we've appointed the business advisor, um, smart targets and things like that, but is it worth, worth what I'm saying, is it worth having a, uh, an expectation that... I mean, I, I, f I feel comfortable that what has been drafted in the um, statement of intent um, is sufficiently robust. Um, I feel comfortable with that, but... Um, and I... Yeah, I guess. Well, the question, uh, just uh, are there any any recommendations that aren't covered in in, uh, in the bulk of the expectations? Through the chair, um, I believe that um, we this is sufficiently no, also, okay. is, is robust. Uh, thanks very much. Do we have a mover for the? Okay, okay thanks, Councillor Gert. A second, thanks, um, Councillor Bowater. Um, any um, discussion? Oh. John Murray? Uh, so to be clear, um, we are not putting an expectation on them to come back and report to us um, about how they've gone against the objectives we've set for them and their financial and non-financial KPIs that they're going to be setting for themselves. Is that not an expectation we should have? Because um, I feel it should be. If, we go, if, we, if we're going to adopt this process, that's part of the process. Um, so through the Chair, this letter of expectation is... Is, is really the first step of them actually preparing a statement of intent that will come back to Council next year. Um, sorry, th this year um, for the next financial year. So there is then an expectation that they fall into that cycle of providing a statement of intent for us to comment on, um, which will include smart measures, KPIs, that sort of stuff. So they... And that's good. And then they'll be reporting back on that. So we'll get their annual report, or we'll be reporting back against that statement of intent. Through, through the chair. If I... Yeah, the floor's yours, Roger. Yeah, um, and just to add, we've scheduled them in for six monthly um, visits um, and presentations and updates. So um, they'll be they'll be expected to be reporting against their financials through that. Thank you. Okay, Thanks, thank Roger. you, Mr. Ball. That's great. Okay.
Okay. Um, any others? Any other comments? No. So, any other speakers for or against? Councillor Rainey. Well, I support this um, recommendation, and um, given that the thrust of the Robson report was to try and improve the levels of communication between the NCC and the NCMA, I think this is going to go a long way down the path of achieving that. Given that it's a relatively new arrangement and that it's uh, mirror, mirroring, mirroring <laughs> a CCO type arrangement, but it's not actually a CCO arrangement, I would expect that there would be some fluidity in, in terms of um, the give and take from an LOE and an SOY. And I'm sure that staff and the NCMA will pick up very clearly on some of the comments um, that have been made um, in regards to reporting. Um, my only concern is if we were truly going to um, line the reporting or the, or the SOE, um, sorry, SOI, LOE cycle up with the others that we do um, engage with in terms of being CCOs or CCTOs, that the timing of that might need to be looked at a little bit carefully depending on, and look, I can't remember off the top of my mind in terms of... Um, how the NCMA's financial year lines up with those of the other trading partners and CCOs that Council um, uh, receives information from. Because we do tend to have um, a reporting back season, as it were, where we get information back from various entities. So it would be nice to think that those things might line up so that Council can consider all of these things at the same time. Just a suggestion. Thanks, Councillor Any Any other, anybody else who'd like to speak for or against? No. Okay. Um, well, we've had a mover and a seconder, so all those in favour? Aye. Against? Carried. Okay, um, so we're moving on to item number eight, the quarterly report to governance and finance to, um, to the committee, 1st of October to the 30, 31st of December 2019. It's page 22 on your agenda. Um, and I think we have Mark Trugertha here to um, present the report. Kia ora, Mark. Welcome. Good morning, councillors. Good morning. Deputy Mayor. Um, I'd hope the report is read and um, just... Uh, have any questions? Thanks. Questions from the floor? Yeah, I'll just bring them up over the moment. <coughs> okay, um, Councillor McGurk. Yeah. First question is the uh, with regards to the forestry income. Is that we're ahead of budget? Are we is that to deal with the have we finished our harvesting season and or is there more to come? Um, so through the chair, I'm trying not to sit in two places at once, but um, I'm happy to talk to the finance commentary. So um, you've got an updated uh, forecast oh, right. that's been tabled um, for the forestry activity, um, and basically, um, and, and some additional commentary um, to update to the report that's um, around the forecast, and really. Um, the harvesting has been delayed because of the access bridge that needs to be built, so it's unlikely that it will be, um, but the year-to-date performance is over due to higher volumes and higher price, but it's unlikely there will be any more harvesting this year. So no more harvesting this year? So we're not, we're, um, Effectively, because of the delays with the bridge, it's pushing the rest of the Mai Tai harvest into the next financial year. Yeah, I'm just mindful that you know, our export markets are basically uh, almost closed off <coughs> for the moment. Yeah. You know, ships, ships with logs on them have now, now sailed and there's no more coming. So we, we're, not at, we're not at risk of that loss sort of loss? Perhaps, perhaps through the chair I could answer this. Um, so you, your concern is, is quite valid. Um, what we've seen, um, particularly in the early part of this quarter with coronavirus, China's shut down, um, and the exports um, have essentially ceased and there's no market sitting on the wharf, which if we did harvest um, would represent around about 40% of our logs um, not going into export markets. So it's a, it, it's got 
massive ramifications for the logging industry and if you follow the news you'll see crews are being laid off um, there's not a, not trucks running up and down the road all sorts of things going on uh, we're isolated a little bit here domestically um, because we've got good domestic markets but um, that's not the full answer so coming back to it yes um, it's a hit of budget because we did um, have a harvest uh, around about September October um, on the fringe hill actually which has come in very very well for us um, and uh, the other um, major harvest which was forecasted for this financial year was up in the Mai Tai itself but that's been um, deferred because we couldn't get a bridge across the river um, done in time so that's gone um, so so we didn't really have to have a look at that in terms of its economic comeback the, the one harvest that we do have um, in the pipeline is on the codgers um, and you'll recall that we initially scheduled that for October last year and we deferred it um, we have been planning that one for some time um, and um, uh, we are having another look at it given we may not have crew availability and um, just what the markets are doing. So that's fairly and squarely in the sights of the Forestry Advisory Group um, and I expect we'll be considering that one at our next meeting. So um, yeah, so she's not, it's, it's sort of not panning out well and we do need to manage the situation carefully. Um, even when the export markets do open up, um, the caution is, is that there will not be the infrastructure to actually undertake harvesting because people have disappeared so it's going to take a bit to get back and um, there's other challenges internationally with wood around the world so um, it is a very much a watch the space while well, nothing's happening there is a lot happening and uh, we need to keep our eye on it very closely thank you John uh, and a question completely unrelated page 44 just looking at the economic measures in terms of um, what our measures are, the fact that we're not on track. And I'm just wondering, I'm all in favour of focusing on our outcomes, but I'm just wondering the measures that we've been held up against, are they the right outcomes we should be uh, on track, uh, that should be uh, assessed on, because we're not on track. So I'm just wondering about, is there a, I suppose the question is, are those the right measures, or are they, um, are, is there an opportunity to, to review those measures? Um, so through the Chair, the next opportunity to redo those measures is part of the 2021 long-term plan. Um, the intention is to withdraw uh, some of those measures such as gross domestic product and so forth, which Council only has a limited ability to um, affect, uh, and come up with some more relevant measures for the economic activity but notwithstanding that um, we certainly will be reporting one way or the other either directly from offices or through the NRDA the economic performance for the Nelson and the Nelson Tasman region. I thank you Councillor Courtney and then it'll be Councillor Brand and Councillor Edgar. Thank you Madam Chair through to Officer M McGurtha. Um, I'm looking at page 23, 4.1, and uh, that's the comments and uh, reference to the New Zealand Institute of Economic Research, NZIER. They say, you, in your report here at the end of 4.1, say three focus areas were recommended to improve reports, which we incorporate in future report writing and training. What were those three areas of recommendation to improve the reports. Uh, through the Chair, I'll just bring up that information so that I can quote directly uh, from the report. It won't be a second. Oh, so many uh, messages. It won't be a second. Here we go. Uh, yes, so through the chair, the three areas of improvement uh, were uh, improvements to the executive summary, so to uh, set the scene of each report. Now, executive summaries are only required in a report if it, you know, is a fairly substantial report. Um, otherwise, we uh, we get straight into uh, things. Increased use of active subheadings to help tell the story. So this is a little bit of a culture change that um, we're trying to introduce 
um, around uh, officers writing uh, reports. Um, cabinet reports and the like have a far more interactive and descriptive way of um, introducing each paragraph. So we normally, you know, we have paragraphs like background and we might sort of then have something like um, update on financials or something. Um, by using verbs we can sort of make it far more interesting and also if you're reading a report you can actually skip from each heading to each heading to get an idea of what's actually uh, in there. Very much how newspaper reports are written and, and the headings that they use. Um, but there's a bit of a culture change, you know, because it's, it's introducing a little bit of creative writing um, in that regard. And then the third one is options. So normally in our reports when we do the options, we pick out each option and we do the advantages and the disadvantages of each of those options. And you'll tend to find that for each one they tend to reverse. So going ahead with the project has advantages and disadvantages. Not doing the project, those advantages and disadvantages get, tend to be turned around. For our more complex reports, what I'm working with the staff to do is to, to use tables so that each option perhaps would be listed down the, the left hand side and across the top would be the key salient measures. So uh, that might include uh, financial obviously, might include uh, community support for that, it might include uh, land disturbance if that was appropriate, um, some of our environmental areas and so forth. And we can sort of use those tables to um, either have sort of ticks, obviously something that was sort of more favourable financially, might have more ticks than one that wasn't. Uh, I don't think we'll get quite to the stage of having um, smiley faces, but you know, there's ways that we can sort of summarise the options, I think, for our complex matters far better than just doing the advantages and disadvantages, particularly when we're sort of putting forward um, four or five options or even sub options. Thank you, Mark. Thank you very much. <coughs> Thank you very much for that, Mark. Um, can I move to page 27 and I'm looking at 4.17, that's economic development income. And if we go right down to the bottom of that um, section, um, it mentions here items over budget include 30,000 for Vodafone New Zealand smart little city contract. Um, can you refresh my memory? What was the total sum of that contract? What was the total price? And this is over and above it. Uh, through the chair, I would need to uh, to check that. I suspect that the thirty thousand is probably the full contract. Yes, and the same would apply, would it, to the uh, regional development agency review? Was that, you know, you say twenty seven thousand for that review over budget? Again, um, I wouldn't mind taking on notice. Actually, you taking on notice the these two questions because I'm curious to know what the review for the Nelson Regional Development Agency um, it is costing. So, if uh, uh, Yes, through the Chair, so they didn't originally have a budget as part of the annual plan, so the uh, total cost for the NRDA review was the 27000 so right. it's 20000 over a zero budget, uh, basically. That review is scheduled to come back to the Governance Committee at the April meeting. Thank you for that. And if I can just go on with one or two others. Um, there is a, I just make a point here about the um, the beach bus subsidy um, as a head of budget, 15,000 due to timing. I just want to leave a thought. I don't want an opinion, a personal opinion or anything like that. I'm just going to leave a thought on this beach bus that we are s providing. Uh, that we could approach the Tahunanui Holiday P Camp um, Trust and see if they would be interested in picking up a share of that. Uh, we're looking at ways, you see, aren't we, to reduce our budgets and our spending coming up the annual plan so we can fit other projects in. And I thought this just may be one that we could pass over to them completely. So I'll leave that one with you. Um, I'm a, a bit amused as to why, um, Mr. Tregurtha, the um, this is 4.22, 
the addition, additional project um, on display 29, um, an additional project Christmas decoration CBD is under 250,000. Yet it's in this, it's in this agenda, it's on this agenda. Um, you say here approximately 71% of the actual spend to date on the Christmas decorations has been capex, and, and that's about that's about the lot of it now. Are you wanting to open up today and tell us a, a bigger story, or I, I just wonder? I can't believe it's a stock, stocking pillar, um, but I just want to know. Um, and it, if it's here just for us to discuss, well, I could ask uh, what was the total spend this year on the Christmas decorations. I could ask that. Um, I could ask: um, Are any of the, the spend going to be on be operational? I could ask that. Um, because you say 71% is capital expenditure. Um, council so Cook. you could just answer those for me. Yeah, um, Councillor. Sorry, that information is on page um, 43, I believe, of the. Um, there's a page about the Christmas decorations on page 43 of the report. So is my there anything is, you'd why, like to add? My, my question then is, why is this on the agenda? Is there a bigger story that wants to be told? Is this an opportunity they're seeking, the officers, to tell us a bigger story? Okay, great. Over to you, Mike. Uh, through the uh, Chair, um, the projects that go in the project sheets generally are for projects over that 250000 There are a number of projects where uh, we feel that there is um, elected member interest in uh, the performance uh, of those projects and so hence we, we include the, the financial information and information on where the project um, actually sits. Uh, the Christmas decoration um, sheet, um, I've received a couple of questions uh, from uh, elected members um, on this project which I'm currently researching and uh, we'll be sort of coming back um, to them directly on, on answers to those. Um, but it has been a matter of discussion around the council table um, over the last few years about uh, value for money, uh, quality, timing um, and the like. So it's an opportunity for elected members to ask any questions but I um, it's not a project that I'm actually um, directly involved with, so I'll probably need to go away and check with staff and come back. Thank, thank you, Mac. Um, I'll, I'll just finish my questions. Um, looking at um, pages 36, 37, um, 38, 39, and starts to, there seems to be a message coming through here that um, renewing service lift at the council, at Civic House, um, uh, replacing uh, ceiling tile in, tiles, uh, and that mentions the roof of the building, the clock tower, um, the upgrade of the first floor on the next page, 37, then we go over to air conditioning on page 38 and then we have the overall capital program on page 39. Now Mr Tregurtha, this starts to raise um, warning signs for me, red flags if you like, because um, none of these things are being moved on or if they are being moved on, um, there's a fair amount of hesitancy, there's no risks seen, no um, concerns with the issues. But quite frankly, I see an overall safety and efficiency issues here in the workplace. I really and truly do. These are building up now. They really are, when you look at these various items that are on this uh, agenda today, replacing ceiling tiles, roof, clock tower, and all of these various things. Um, so should we be taking this more seriously as a council? Um, I've, I've got uh, Nikki Harrison who would like to respond to that. Um, so through the chair, as you'll be aware, a majority of these projects are actually on hold while we look at the accommodation options. Um, 
I draw your attention to page 36 where we are actually progressing renewing the service lift, the ceiling tiles and the roof. So those items are being progressed with haste um, within the renewals budget, but the rest of the upgrade of the building is currently on hold. Thank, thank you, Nikki. Um, councillor, I've got Councillor Brand, then Edgar, Fulton, Rainey and John Peters, so um, the floor's yours, Trudy. Thank you, through the Chair. Um, I'm just going to ask for a little bit of patience as being a new councillor and just trying to get my head around this financial jungle. Um, so my question is actually a general question about finances because I think this is the correct committee to bring it to. Um, I'm not sure who to direct it to. Um, but when I work through all of these plans and committees and budgets that come through and it talks about looking at the tracking and the unders and the overs and the pause and the on time and the um, everything else. And we've got the annual plan coming up and we're talking about prioritising our um, projects and we have the thing come up about rates and increase in rates. And so for me, I sort of worked through it and had a couple of conversations and the general public come back with that the rates increase that they received does not marry up with the rates increase that the councils say that they are doing. So I look at the CPI and inflation and the rates that an everyday person receives and in general they receive the 3.1 or the 3.3 .3 or the 1.2 and when council puts out the rates increase, while it's averaged across because of how the rates are calculated, um, it comes up higher and I was sort of advised that the council's CPI and inflation rates are a bit higher than the average Joe person. So how do we look at income streams to marry up that difference? Because if, for example, an individual's person has a CPI increase, say, of 3.2 and the council's CPI is 9%, that's a 5% difference and we're saying Oh, we'll put the rates up to cover this project, but really they don't have the 5.8% difference to cover that. So what income streams is council looking at to generate that and putting ratepayers as the last option to find the income to cover a project instead of the first? Thank you. Um, Nikki Harris is going to respond. Um, so through the chair, that's probably more an annual plan question than a year-to-date, how we're tracking against the current year question. But I mean, what, through the long-term plan, we do actually go through a revenue and financing policy review, which is really looking at your funding sources. So there is a cascade that, you know, you look for fees and charges first, you know, you look for subsidies from other sources. There's all sorts of things before you get to the point of um, the ratepayers. So that that's like a really important discussion that will be taking place through this f um, year for the long-term plan. And those we have funding targets between user pays versus rates. Um, I think that's probably the main kind of question, but I think you've also got a question around why we don't, why our rates cap isn't CPI, it's a different, because our costs are not necessarily driven by CPI. They're driven by um, other factors like the cost of asphalt or whatever. There's a whole lot of reasons why our costs are not necessarily driven by CPI. Um, and in terms of we publish an average rate increase, which is really around the whole, um, that's an average across everybody, but everyone's rates go up differently depending on, on the services that they get and how we've made a decision about how the rates fall between residential and commercial is probably the biggest driver. So, I hope that answers your question. Thank, thanks, Nikki. Councillor Fulton. Uh, yes, thank you, through the Chair. I have a couple of questions. My first question is with regards to page 41 of our agenda on the Haven Precinct. Um, can you just update me? I can see that the health of this project's progressing really well and there's obviously been some early concept designs. Uh, can I get updated on what that means and how that um, feeds off work which we did maybe six, seven years ago, whether those have been considered as well? I think we looked at it five years ago too. Um, through the Chair, a report is coming to the next Council meeting on that so it's probably best if we leave that till then. Okay, and so the um, 2021 budget of uh, 
225, will that be discussed in that report as well? So how that will be spent and what the priorities are there. Yeah, okay, thank you. My next question is around page 42 of the agenda, the CBD enhancements. Um, the first line says general CBD enhancement with priority to be decided by councillors. Um, what does that mean? Does that mean we get some input into how that funding, like I actually think what's happening out in our CBD is really great and well done to Alan and his team, but there has been a few surprises perhaps and I'm curious how, how we have some input into um, what, what priorities we would like and also how are we looking at sustainability when we deliver in that. In that. My, yeah. um, through the chair, the staff are working on some new concept plans and um, ideas. Uh, I've seen that there was a report in the process of being prepared. I just can't recall off the top of my head um, what meeting that's scheduled to um, come to, but I can um, go back and check that out and come back to you. Mm -hmm. I, I guess I'll just give an example. That artificial grass I actually think is a really great look, but it took some of us a bit by surprise and in terms of sustainability, is it is it the right look for our city? I think that it's a great look and you can't put down grass which people can walk over a lot but it would have been helpful to have had a sustainability assessment of that and to be sure that that's the, that is what we're looking, seeking. Um, it does say decided by councillors so I'm just curious how that, how that work is going to be fed back to us. It might be that the um, urban working group is looking at looking at that but it hasn't been um, taken to the entire council and I'm curious why the overall health is, is read as well. Um, so, so I think my, my understanding is that we are going to get an update from the, um, the CBD working group, or Central City working group back at the next committee meeting a council meeting, sorry, but um, is there something that you'd like to add? Sure, I can, I can add. Um, the, the rollout of some of the treatment for the Upper Trafalgar Street, which is a, um, not a permanent, it's just a short-term, six-month treatment, um, lies under what is called the Tactical Urban Initiative, TUI, yep. which is um, a, a bunch of work that sits within the delegation of the staff just, just to roll out. The suite of um, treatments that they that they are going to be considering, which they are going out for um, RFPs on at the moment, for the long term um, treatment for some of these urban initiatives, is something that I'm presuming that uh, is something that will be coming back for councillors to um, to look at. Okay, great. Thanks for clarifying that. Um, and then my final question is around the Christmas decorations in the CBD, and I see that. Um, I'm a, I'm a little confused. The overall health says it's fine, but, so, but it also says that not all of the funding's been spent. I just want to seek some clarity that when um, considering that project, we're looking for local, naturally made, um, low use of plastic in terms of how we implement uh, Christmas decorations in our CBD. Um, does somebody want to answer that, or should we just take that as noted by staff? Okay. Thank, thanks, Councillor Fulton. Um, we've got Councillor Rainey and then John Peters. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, under the project um, sheets, page 41, um, regarding the Haven Precinct, um, my question is, are you able, uh, Mark, to give us a little bit of clarification about the project update? Initial analysis of each property has been completed, now seeking to initiate works for part of the precinct before the whole of the precinct plan is developed. Um, and you may, I understand if you may not be able to answer this, but um, can you give us the status of what the project plan actually is, or the development of the project plan? Um, through the chair, I'll um, uh, give you my understanding, and we are discussing it at the meeting on Friday yeah. of the working group, and also uh, it's coming to the next council meeting as a report back. Uh, so, as I think uh, most of you will be aware, 
uh, there were legal impediments to development on some of these sites and so there's been a large piece of work going through each site and actually understanding what the situation was which is what that first part of that statement refers to. What, what um, staff are now bringing back to the next council meeting is saying we had previously done a piece of work that looked at that whole area and had um, some goals and a vision and was going to um, develop it in a, in a way all at one time. And what we're saying now is there's an opportunity for some of those, a, a section of that to move forward um, straight away if council is interested uh, and for the more difficult areas to um, be done in slower pace. So we've had a lot of interest in some of the buildings and there's some opportunities for council to move forward. So it's really a choice between whether you want to keep that whole development as one piece uh, and wait until it can all go or whether you're interested in making some moves now on some of the properties where there's interest. Thank you. Through you, through you Madam Chair. So um, just by way of a comment on that, in that regard, as Chair of the Central City Working Group, I am aware that there are, uh, there are new faces around the table, um, around the council table, and that not all counts, current councillors are aware of all of the issues uh, in regards to the Haven Precinct. So it's certainly my intention, we're going to discuss this on Friday morning at the Central City Working Group meeting, is a rollout of information sharing so that everybody will, will, will be understanding what the issues okay. are. Th th thanks very much, it's appreciated. Um, um, the Mayor? Thank you, Madam Chair. Just, just adding to that, uh, Councillor Ryan and I had a good discussion yesterday just around um, challenges of changing councils and and um, and actually bringing forward projects that, that many of actually the previous council haven't really seen for quite some time. So, um, sorry, Nick, I just haven't had a chance to to wrap back to you to say or, or, or Mark to say look, uh, look, I think we think we need a bit of a, a workshop session around that just to bring everyone up, up to speed with what actually is there and have a discussion around that to frame up what may then happen. And so at this stage, I'm potentially that rep the report that was being discussed before may well not come to the next council meeting. It may just push out a little bit further to allow that time. Thank you. Um, I'm actually going to... I missed Councillor Edgar. <laughs> Sorry, John. So um, we're going to go to Councillor Edgar and then John Peters next. Ah, thank you. Um, so just firstly, uh, follow up on uh, Councillor Brand's comments about um, funding. I was just wondering, the infrastructure funding and financing bill, submissions on that close on the 5th of March, and you know that looks at the special purpose vehicles for funding of infrastructure. I was just wondering um, if council was uh, going to be putting in a submission for that. I know central government did do a huge flurry of uh, consultations all over Christmas, which is a super time to do that and um, makes it very awkward for um, staff resourcing. But yeah, just wondering if that's a bill where we're either working with LGNZ or Solgum or someone or doing our own submission. Uh, through the Chair, so I've reviewed the draft Solgum submission and it seems to be, you know, cover the, the types of points that um, I think that uh, Council would support um, as well. But I haven't undertaken sort of a detailed analysis and I think that the Solgum Board was re um, reviewing that draft uh, this week and then the, the final will come out to us. Um, there may be opportunity for us to put in a submission um, supporting the soldier uh, uh, input. Um, I'm reluctant to do that without actually analysing in detail what they've said in case there were points there that um, we didn't um, necessarily agree with. Uh, yeah, the time frame is very tight to be able to sort of um, undertake that, that work. I need to just have a look at that over the next couple of days. Sorry, to, uh, just info, is there any opportunity to do a, a pro forma submission um, just in case um, you know things come to light or we need to be able to uh, provide input at you know you never know where a bill may go um, and it is you know has potential to have a real impact on us. Yes, we can certainly do that. Thank you. And just um, my last question is just relates to page um, 45 to the um, uh, Tita Ihu uh, intergenerational strategy. Um, so the draft is out for public consult or public feedback uh, that closes tomorrow. I think it is. I, I noted some changes from from the version that came to council, but probably not um, 
you know, significant changes. But I still noted that it didn't have the um, economic analysis. It, you know, it is first and foremost an economic development strategy. Um, you know, PGF provided funding to help um, with that, uh, you know, for it to address issues such as low productivity, uh, low wages. I'm just wondering when that piece of work is going to take place um, and what the sort of approximate time frame um, that that may uh, result in before the um, strategy is, is actually completed. Right. Um, through the chair, uh, my understanding is that the um, PGF have sort of said that uh, the steering committee um, is responsible for the, the final delivery um, of that strategy. Uh, certainly it evolved to be sort of far more encompassing than what was originally um, intended, you know, sort of a, a broader uh, examination of, you know, community outcomes and um, an all-off community approach rather than a purely economic approach. Um, I think once a strategy has gone back through to the steering committee and uh, that feedback has been taken into account, um, I think there is room then to have a discussion about, well, look, is there a gap for um, Te Tauihu as far as the detailed economic um, strategy work and uh, I, we need to have that discussion on what that gap is and how that would actually be delivered. Uh, Mr Peters. Thank you Madam Chair. Uh, really as a follow up to uh, the questions raised by Councillor Courtney in relation to uh, the project reporting, I, I wondered through you whether it might be useful if I gave a, a, a very brief update, which may be of interest, particularly to chairs of other committees, uh, around the brief discussion that took place at Audit and Risk and the receipt of the Audit New Zealand uh, report on the annual report, uh, and which talked about the need um, and the recommendations surrounding the way these reports are in fact presented. Thank you. I, because I, I think it is of interest, this is this the, the content of these brief summaries that come to each relevant committee, and the ones of significant cost and, and uh, risk go through to uh, audit and risk. Um, it has been an interest for some time uh, for audit and risk and finance for the last the last committee, recognising that when we look at these reports as they stand at the moment, and and using the one on on page forty two as an example. A considerable amount of red, but no project issues and no real explanation about where this is at. So there is a recommendation that's come from Audit New Zealand and accepted by uh, management that during this term this format will be reviewed to show the full history of the project in terms of its initial um, uh, deadline around around the timing, the original time frame, the original uh, proposed budget and variations to that budget it, with an intention of keeping a single report but hopefully one that will be more instantaneously uh, a picture of what's actually happening uh, to that and, and I think um, that's something I'm, I'm particularly keen on and, and hopefully will be of use to uh, uh, chairs of other and, and to other committee members. Thank you. That's really useful, thank you. I think that's it for questions, is there anybody? Sure, Councillor Fulton. Really briefly, the last page of our Agenda 51, all of Council Bro Projects Health as per committee. Why has the Environment Committee not got a section? Is, is there a page missing? Or Sorry, I need a question. My question is, I can't find the Environment Committee projects. I presume we have some. I think some of them aren't in the best health, but... It is. So through the chair, it's predominantly CapEx projects. Um, I would have to check.
Okay. Do, do, I, do I have anybody who'd like to move the recommendation that we receive the report? Okay, thanks, um, um, Councillor Brahan O'Neill Stevens, um, and a seconder, Councillor Eager. Um, thanks, Mark and Nikki. Um, is there any discussion? No? Okay. Oh, I'd like to um, put the recommendation. All those in favour? Oh, Aye. Aye. Against? Carried. We're now moving on to um, confidential business. So what I'd actually like to do is just um, move that we um, step... Pardon? Yeah, that we move it, move into public excluded and take a five-minute break. Um, have we got a... Yep. Okay, thanks, um, Councillor Bowman. Favour. <laughs> Against, carried.